Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Forty days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he was fulfilling the law, but in reality, he was coming to meet his believing people. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by the same spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exaltation. So let us all let us also gather today by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to, to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again revealed in glory. Let us all stand in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, pray. O God, true light, who created light eternal, spreading it far and wide, pour, we pray, into the hearts of the faithful the brilliance of perpetual light, so that all who are brightened in your holy temple by the splendor of the scandals may happily reach the light of your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us go in peace to meet the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. And let us glorify the Lord by singing the entrance song. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple, in the substance of our flesh, so by your grace, we may be presented to you with minds made pure through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. And you may uh, 
foot of Uganda side. The prophet Malachi proclaims the day when the Lord will come to the temple. A messenger will be sent to prepare the people for the meeting with the Lord. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messengers to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will, endure, who will endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then we sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the old days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gates your lintels reach up you ancient portals that the king of glory may come in Who is this king of glory? It is the Lord. who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle who is this king of glory Lift up, O gates, your lintels. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is this King of Glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Who is this King of Glory? Jesus Christ, the Lord comes to us in human form, like us in every way, that he may become our merciful intercessor before God. The second reading. A reading from the letter of to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death. That is the devil, and free those who the fear of, of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help the angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way that he might be a merciful and high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people because he himself was tested through what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were, were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be contradicted. And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Vanuel, of the tribe of Asher, who was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, let us uh, first watch this uh, uh, short uh, video of the Philippine Conference on New Evangelization. Magpasalamat po tayo at magpuri sa Panginoon sa magandang araw na ito. At tayo ay kanyang tinipon bilang isang sambayanan. At welcome po sa PCNE number 7. the better world, the better earth, the better humanity, and a purer church because we have been true to the very identity of God, the inner dialogue of love, Father, Son, and Spirit. If God is that, the church should be that. Humanity and creation should be that.
religion, yan yung nagbukuklut sa atin. Siya yung bridge para makaintindihan tayo. Kailangan sa bahay mismo magumpisa. Yung sinasabi natin, change begins with me. humili ngayon. <laughs> Dalawang araw po yung uh, last uh, Tuesday and Thursday lang po yan sa Araleta Coliseum. Every year po mayroong ganyan na uh, Philippine Conference on New Evangelization. Of course, yung uh, in church dyan sa Archdiocese of Manila, si Father Jason ay uh, classmate ko naman. Ako sa dayos ng military, ako rin ang in charge sa Commission on New Evangelization. Kaya grabe yung pagkadismaya ko na yung last Tuesday and last uh, Wednesday ng conference, nakaredy na ho kami. No, talagang bubili na kami ng tickets para mag-attend. No? Sabay din ng aking two days na exam para sa aking uh, schooling. Hmm? Uh, meron kasing requirement na kailangan tayong mag-undergo ng schooling kung makapasama ko pag schooling. Kaya na-miss ko rin tong, uh, conference this year. Uh, pero napaka pinanood ko yung uh, video, no? napakaganda ko yung uh, nangyari. Of course, yung uh, topic ko talaga, sinasabi ng Cardinal, hindi to sa, sa kanya. Yung PCN, hindi siya yon no? Of course, siya yung mastermind talaga ng uh, PCNE. No, nagsimula nung seven years na PCNE 7 ho itong uh, last, uh, uh, last uh, Tuesday and Thursday, uh, Wednesday. At uh, ito ay para sa mga participants, mga nag-attend, at sa lahat na gustong uh, kumbaga aware tungkol sa evangelization. Of course, yung uh, evangelization naman, uh, sharing our faith no, to, other, to others. This year, ang topic po ay at sino ang aking kapwa? At tamang-tama naman, uh, this year, a year of ecumenism, interfaith, uh, uh, interf interfaith dialogue, and uh, indigenous peoples. O bakit naman natin na binanggit natin, pinakita natin yung video na ito sa inyo? Of course, yung ating uh, uh, readings for this uh, Sunday, anticipated mass, sa celebration ng presentation of the Lord in the Temple, ay tungkol sa God comes to us in uh, different ways. The prophet Malachi, God comes to us, to his people, in the form of fire in order to purify his people. Of course, in the fullness of time, God comes to us through our Lord Jesus Christ, who becomes one of us. Kaya yung Diyos ay naging kapwa natin. At sino ba ang kapwa natin? Kahit sino. 
maging sino pa man yan. Basta tao, yan ay ating kapwa. And God cares, loves all people. That's why He became one of us. The very purpose of incarnation, why Jesus became man, He assumed our human situation, He entered our trials, our pains, our sorrows, and even our death because He wants to be one of us. Nakasama natin ang Diyos. Kasama natin siya. No? Sana yun po ang treatment natin sa bawat isa. Kahit hindi siya belong to the Catholic Church, kahit hindi siya kagrupo natin, sana yung ating pagtingin sa lahat ay neighbor, kapwa. Basta tao, kapwa natin yan na minahal ng Panginoong Diyos. Of course, yung PCNE, yan po ay tawag, calling, at the same time, mission. Uh, kaya, ano yung uh, last part niyan ay magte-text ka. Ano yung sinasabi ng card daw? Ito yung text natin. No? Kapatid. No? Uh, ano yun? Mahal kita, kasama kita, magkasama tayo sa mission ni Jesus. So let us uh, welcome the Lord Jesus Christ no? sa ating kapwa. And let's always uh, wait for Him you know, as He comes to us in different ways, especially sa mga taong nakakasalamuhan natin. So all of us, we are all neighbors. At sana makita tayong kapwa sa bawat isa. At kahit na lahat tayo ay, uh, uh, ano yan, bawal muna kung um, humawak sa kamay. Kaya you will receive Holy Communion sa kamay muna. Uh, at least uh, habang mayroong pang threat sa virus. O kaya po, wala muna tayong ano, uh, kissing, wala muna ng touching. Uh, pasensya na po. Mamaya, alis din ako kasi para makaiwas. <laughs> uh, ganun. No? Uh, but uh, we show our concern our compassion, our love for one another. Kanina, maaga akong gumising para pumunta sa Batangas kasi may order. Punta doon sa Batangas sa isang evacuation center at uh, mayroong uh, ceremonias. Nandun yung some cabinet uh, secretaries ng Malacanang. Uh, nandun yung commander. No? Ano yung ceremonias, turnover lang naman ho ng uh, comfort rooms para sa mga evacuees. So, uh, prayer ako at ibibless ko yung CR. <laughs> uh, pero doon po, habang nagaantay ako ng uh, ceremonia, napunta ako doon sa katabing uh, school, may canteen. At nakipagkwentuhan tayo doon sa nagtitinda ng pagkain. Oh, kumusta yung mga evacuees? Ilan sila? Anong ginagawa nila? Uh, makwento rin. Maya-maya, uh, nag-offer ho ng, pwede, hindi naman niya ako tinanong kung sino ako, hindi ko rin sa tinanong kung anong pangalan niya. Nag-offer siya, pwede ho bang tikman niyo yung pagkain na tinitinda namin? Uh, ano po yan? Libre ho ba yan? Ay, libre ho ito. Uh, so, pinakain tayo ng siomay, saka gula, ano, yung palamig na gulaman. No? Libre, no? Nakita ko yung kabaita nung tatlong nagtitinda doon na kahit hindi ba ako nagpakilala, alam nila na bisita doon kasi mayroong activity. No? Pinakita nila yung pagiging kapwa tao nila sa akin. Of course, pinakita ko rin. Siguro magtataka yun kasi natanaw nila, nagbihis ako ng pagiging pare. Pari pala niya yung ka kausap natin kanina. No? So, kahit sino tayo, 
sana makita natin na si Jesus ay nasa bawat isa sa atin. At uh, let us always welcome the Lord who meets us, who comes to us in many ways. Amen? Please rise for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, in one God the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered, suffered death, death and was buried, and rose again, again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and, and his kingdom will have no end. end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the, Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe, I believe in one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ shines as the light of salvation to all nations and the glory of his people. Let us bring our prayers to the Father who gave up his only Son to light our way through him. With confidence we pray, God of light, listen to your church. God of light, listen to your church. That the church may show the world the true face of Christ and be a sign of salvation to all. We pray. God of light, listen to your church. That those in authority may render selfless service to society, have the courage to, re to speak and act in the name of truth and justice and bear witness to the light of Christ, we pray. God of light, listen to your church. That consecrated men and women, through their faithful observ observance, the evan evangelis evangelical councils may always become beacons of light to their communities and to the church, we pray. God of light, listen to your church. That expectant mothers whose hearts are troubled, may receive helpful, loving support from their families, friends, and community. We pray, God of light, listen to your church, that all those who have gone before us may be welcomed in the company of the angels and the saints who internally sing the praise of God. We pray, God of light, listen to your church. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions and all intentions offered in this Mass. We pray. God of light, listen to your church. Almighty Father, Christ your Son became man that he might lead us to you. As we celebrate his presentation to you, we offer our humble petitions and ask him to bring us your presence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the offering of the bread and the wine, symbols of the fruit of our hard-earned labor of the week. Please join in the singing of the offertory song. Steadfast hope shall not break up all within the crown. I am assured his promises will never fail. As long as life remains, he is faithful. God is patient, God is kind, he does not envy. He does not boast, His 
His ways are higher than my own. These thoughts consume the great unknown. For this alone I'm sure my God is love. Please stand. Pray that my uh, sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy may church. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord. We pray for you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with yours. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our truth and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for your co-eternal Son, was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we do go forward rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints, praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please you me. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered really this passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give him thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one 
by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Mighty Hubert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. who Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that by the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With, your with a smile, we offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you. Go to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For orderly communion, please be seated and wait for the ushers to guide you. holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfill Simeon's expectation that he would not see death until he had been privileged 
to welcome the Christ. So may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all kneel as together we pray. Uh, Orasha Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the 2019 and coronavirus that has claimed lives and has affected many. We, we pray, pray for, for your grace, grace for, for the, the people tasked with studying, studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease, and, its disease, and, and of stemming the tide of its transmission. transmission. Guide, guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they, they may minister to the sick with competence, competence and compassion and of, and of those with government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this epidemic. We pray for those afflicted, may they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help, and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your, your Son, who lives, lives and reigns with you in the unity of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit God, God forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calongsod, pray for us. Amen. And Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Um, please be seated for some announcements. Uh, there will not there will not be a kids ministry today uh, due to the coronavirus okay we are encouraging the kids and youth from ages 6 to 18 years old if you are interested to be part of the lector school and serve every first saturday of the month please sign up at the registration table outside this venue uh, may we also request those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries for the month of February to please come forward to receive a special blessing from Father Rex. Mahirap kasi mag-celebrate ng birthday pag February. Ah, meron pala. Kailan ka, sister? When? February din ako eh. <laughs> ah, mayroon pang isa. Ah, oh, tatlo na. Ah, oh, pat. Ganun talaga ang mga ipinanganak sa February. <laughs> okay, please uh, all stand and let us extend our hands for uh, our birthday celebrants. Lord God, we praise and thank you for the gift of life and uh, love. <coughs> Hear our prayers for them. Our brothers and sisters celebrate uh, their birthday for this month of February. Grant your uh, choices blessings of uh, happiness, peace of souls, good health, and uh, give them more meaningful and fruitful uh, years uh, to come together with their loved ones. In the name of the Father. Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. Finally, let us all joke. <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. May He turn your steps towards Himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I offer the Eucharist, go in peace.
We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. Feast as Amara. One is start of the month, February. How's your 2020? Mean for us, some January might be rough or you might be blessed or celebrating, but whatever. But that case, I know God has plans for us. We know we might be struggling, there might be obstacles in front of us. Those are little things compared to our big God. So come on, as we close this series right now, let's worship our God, feel His presence, and declare He's a great God. He's a big God. And every little thing doesn't matter because of Him.
want to focus on you. Oh, Father, just fill this place with your love. You know we might be struggling. Some of us are be getting through some trials, but right now, we just want to focus on you. You know, Lord, that each step you're always a hand, a step away from us. We just you know, Lord, in this struggle, you know you're ready to pull us. And as we sing this song, Lord, Father, we be reminded that you're always there. And when we hit rock bottom, you're always on the bottom ready to lift us up. Yes, we sing.
always meeting us, for pulling us back in your arms, for loving us unconditionally. Oh, Father, surrender in your lives, in your lives. Praise your name to lift you up. We just declare this. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in His place. The Lord is in His place. Come, Holy Spirit, drive us away again. The Lord is in His place. The Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God deserves the highest praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, let me hear you. Come on. He deserves better than that. Woo. A lot has happened in the last week. First month of uh, the decade. A lot has happened in the first month. I saw, I read uh, a meme and it said, uh, we got through last year. Parang isang taon, no? Yung January. So, thank God, the year is over. Sabi, no? The year is over. Isang buwan pa lang. Diba? In the last week, we had CTK. We had coronavirus. We had Taal. We had Kobe Bryant passing away so, so uh, quickly. But you know, in our parish, CTK means Christ the King. That's our parish, Christ the King. And in all these, amen, come on, give the Lord a, the offering, clap offering He deserves. You know, it's a, a, a really when things like this happen, it's a reminder to us, CTK, Christ the King, He rules, He is sovereign, He is above everything that happens, amen? Hallelujah. And I just want to wanna share with you, um, well, first some house house uh, reminders um, this is for the safety of all of us feasters this has been um, uh, sent out to the builders to to share with everybody so uh, we want to protect you all of you all of us during our feast so uh, for you to, to feel safe we will do the following things number one we will um, ask you to please wear masks if uh, uh, as much as possible um, we were supposed to provide masks this week but it was too short notice we couldn't get supply but next week we will be handing out masks 
to all um, the feasters. If you have your own supply, uh, please feel free to bring so uh, we um, can uh, make our supplies last. Um, and then wash your hands as often as you can. Uh, tingnan nyo nga yung, tingnan nyo lang, wag nyo hawakan. Just look at the hand of the person beside you. Is it dry? Because they've been washing their hands too much. I know mine is. Para ko nag-swimming. Alam mo yung wrinkled na yung fingers. And then, um, in the name of love, in the name of love and safety, we will avoid, um, you know, Beso beso, uh, holding hands. Uh, if you notice in the Our Father, medyo hindi na nag holding hands kahit na magkapamilya. Uh, and instead of uh, our usual greetings of beso beso and uh, shaking hands, we will just say, Anyeho sayo. Ganun na lang, okay? Or namaste. Ganyan. Okay, that's how we can greet each other. Uh, and um, of course, our big smiles. Uh, and um, nothing can beat the power of prayer. Amen. Imagine as a church, uh, the Catholic Church in the Philippines at least has sent out uh, the Oratio Imperata against uh, this virus. So we will fight it on all fronts. Uh, we fight it physically by um, keeping ourselves healthy. Uh, stock up on um, vitamin C. I've been uh, overdosing on vitamin C, quote-unquote, because uh, I, I can feel that um, I'm catching something. So, uh, biglang umi, lalang lumayo yung music minister. No. And um, uh, so, you know, uh, good health, uh, sleep early, nothing beats sleep. And um, also, uh, by being safe and uh, spiritually by praying. And, you know, in times like this, the more we remember how much we need the Lord, how much we're so dependent on Him, that even if there are so many things we can control, ay, tao rin pala tayo, no? Na, naalala natin, Lord, there are things really that we cannot control. And so, uh, for these things, we, we lift them up to you. I just want to share, uh, before uh, we pray our um, favorite prayer here at the feast and um, honor God's word, I want to jump right into the word. If you have your Bibles, you might want to open it with me and, and um, mark this. Psalm 91, this is a prayer I want to share with you because when things like this happens, we become praning, diba? we become scared, we become so, so uh, what's the word, um, yeah, cautious and if we're so, um, you know, we have a phobia of uh, all these things. But let me share with you um, Psalm 91 and uh, I'll read from verse 1. Uh, you can open your Bible so you can mark it there. And uh, uh, you can also pray this during your prayer time. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. Uh, verse 6, do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday, though a thousand fall at your side. Though ten thousand are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. And it's a beautiful prayer for us to, you know, um, pray every day. Sometimes um, uh, we get so overwhelmed with all this news and the fear is real. But we need to also, as we boost our immune system and as we uh, be, uh, you know, try to be as um, safe and sanitary as possible, let's also uh, boost our faith by praying scripture and knowing that God is watching over us. Amen? Okay, so uh, let's, um, we're in the seventh talk. This is the last talk of the series, Birth of a King, natapos na rin ang Pasko <laughs> sa, sa feast. And um, uh, we'll be opening a new uh, series, but still following the book of Matthew. But this is the last talk in our series. So together, let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Let's have the novena to God's love. Is it up there? Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. 
Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I'm blessed, I'm blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. And we honor God's word as we sing. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And we are still, as I said in the book of Matthew, we're reading from Matthew 3. And um, the one big message that God has for us uh, today is that he sees your greatness. Can you tell that person beside you? God sees your greatness. See, can you say it without, ano, walang talsik na laway? God sees your greatness. God sees your greatness. Okay. Um, and we're gonna read from, Ma, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, from Matthew 2 pa rin talaga uh, tayo. Um, when, uh, verse 22, if, you have, uh, if you're opening your Bible, so, but when um, Joseph learned, heard that the new, uh, learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. We, we read this last week, but we're still here. Then after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said, he will be called a Nazarene. Together we pray. Lord, we thank you for your messages for us in these days, Lord. You are speaking to us so powerfully through events in our world, through events in our lives, through your word, through what you're doing in the church. Thank you, Jesus, that you see in us goodness, that you see in us faithfulness, that you see in us love, even when we are sinful, even when we are unfaithful to you. And we ask, Lord God, that you may deepen our knowledge of your word, that your word, Lord God, may come alive in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Come on, let's give the Lord another clap offering. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift his name up high. We give you praise and thanks, oh God. You deserve the highest praise. We thank you for this day. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. Again, tell the person beside you, God sees your greatness. Parang di kayo masyadong convinced. Talaga, God sees my greatness. You know, when I was growing up, um, I always felt like I, I, I'm the second to the youngest among six siblings. And yung mga ate kuya ko, medyo ano, tough act to follow, lalo na yung mga ate ko. Kasi they're very, my older sisters, you know, they're very accomplished in school. They're honor students and, you know... Um, one graduated in uh, magna cum laude uh, and then became a doctor. The other one graduated in medicine also with honors. And, you know, they took the medical bar. They took the dental uh, uh, exams. And they were, you know, they placed top 10, top 20. Wow, diba? Tough act to follow. And so I always felt like I had to, um, you know, impress my dad. Uh, especially my dad because uh, my dad was, um, you know, he was the kind of figure in our family that you wanted to impress, that you wanted to win over. And every time I felt like I had to prove myself to my dad. Uh, but when I was uh, um, 24, I left my family. I've told this story to, to some of you already or maybe all of you. I left my family at the age of 24 to serve the Lord full time. And um, so... I would, my, my dad would sometimes introduce us, you know, those times when he would be with his friends and all four, four of us sisters um, would be together. I, I have two brothers, but uh, both of them uh, uh, live in the States. Um, so 
my 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 dad would introduce us oh ito si ito y- si Becky ito yung anak kong ano doktora o bigay niyan tapos ay ito si Rona ay dentista yan ang clinic niya diyan sa Makati tapos my dad will jump to the youngest i'm the second to the youngest tatatalon dun sa youngest ay ito si Kelly ano yan interior designer at uh, ito si Risa nagsaserve siya kay Lord Ganon, ganon. So di syempre, parang, you know, it, it, it's, um, it was something that I felt like I had to prove myself. That you know what, Dad, you know, um, being a servant of the Lord is, is um, something to be proud of. And, um, but, you know, uh, and then one day, one day, um, this was when I was already grown up, my dad said something that changed my, my thinking. He told me, he said, you know, when you were young, I saw you among your siblings. And, and, she sa- and he said, um, I always thought you had what it takes to succeed. And you know what? You know what my reaction was? My reaction was, Daddy, why did you tell me when I was younger? Because I felt like I always had to prove myself. But if I knew that he already saw my greatness, then all I had to do was just leave it out. And I didn't have to prove anything, right? God sees your greatness. God sees your greatness and you don't have to prove anything. You just have to live out the gifts that God has already given you. And so... Uh, <coughs> when when the world looks at people who are successful, you know when when my dad would say, "Oh, th- this is my daughter who's a d- doctor. This is my doc my sis- my daughter who's a dentist." You know these are. It depends on which um, standard you're looking at, right? And so there's something called metrics. There's a way that the world measures or people measure greatness and. Um, What, you know, in the world, um, metrics means, uh, you know, may certain standard yung mundo. And if you fit into that, then they say, wow, you're this, you're, you're great, you're beautiful, you're, you know. And it, it's like, for, uh, for me, when I see a buffet, when I go to a buffet and I look at the food, I'll say, wow, that buffet is good if it has Rib eye, if it has lamb chops, if it has um, ano yun, foie gras, diba? Wow! Diba? Then you say, wow, that buffet is really amazing. But you know what? When we're, you know, when, you, when you're with Bo Sanchez in a buffet, he doesn't judge a buffet when he looks at the beef carving and the, because he's a semi-vegetarian. You know, he he looks at the salad, the greens, the the vegetables, which I don't eat when I'm a buffet. Okay, that's my secret. That's my secret. When I go to, to a buffet, I go for the you know I go for the red meat para sulit, de ba? Kasi yun yung mahal. Yung yung salad cheap lang yan eh, de ba? But then we have different metrics. There's a different way. that he measures a buffet based on, uh, you know, as against mine because I'm a meat eater and he's not. So what makes us successful in the world is not necessarily what makes you successful in God's eyes. So in the world, what are the metrics of the world? You have attractiveness. You have affluence. Yeah, man, wow. Straight ng hair niya. Mayaman yung napangasawa, di ba? Straight lang yung hair mo, mayaman, na, mayaman ka na. Bakit pinangat ang kong kulot? Bakit? Di ba pwedeng mayaman ang kulot? Di ba? Di ba? Achievements. These are, the, these are the metrics of the world. And um, you know, when you, when you look at attractiveness, honestly speaking, when I watch Miss Universe, I don't know if this is your, you know, sometimes I watch Miss Universe and I'm like, Talaga, yan ang pinakamagandang babae sa universe. Because I can find people, you know, I know women who, for me, are more attractive than these people, you know? Especially when you see them without makeup. 
Di ba? When you see them without makeup, aba, pantay-pantay na lang tayo. Kaya kong labanan si Catriona Gray pag walang makeup. Yan, nakita niyo na ba yung kanyang picture na walang makeup? Di ba? Pero dapat nakamakeup ako. <laughs> Siya walang makeup para labanan natin. Para patas ang labanan. Di ba? Di ba? You know what I mean? There are different um, metrics of attractiveness. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote about this in, in one of my earlier books, Discovering Your Inner Beauty Queen. It's out of print already, but um, the e-books are still on sale. I, I, I was, um, you know, I, I used to have an insecurity when it came with mestizas because whenever I see a mestiza, I always think, ay, indio, mestiza. Di ba? Para <laughs> yung, yung colonization, yung ano natin, 300 years of Spanish rule has uh, affected the way I think even of myself. You know, so whenever there would be mestizas around, I felt so uh, insignificant. I remember <clears throat> I used to be a, a ballet scholar in um, in Cultural Center of the Philippines. That, that it happened in another lifetime. <laughs> but <clears throat> every time there would be mestizas in the cafeteria, even though I was so hungry, I would wait until all of them went out. Because I felt like, you know, I was I, I felt like I was so ugly and you know, you know them being there. So, you know, it, it, the attractiveness, you know, the way we measure attractiveness is very, very different. And um, um, some people uh, may not be attractive, but they go into this, this uh, other um, measurement, this other metrics, which is called affluence. Thank you. And, you know, maybe you know the story of this uh, family of beautiful actresses and they're fighting over one guy you know from the sisters down to the niece they're fighting over one guy and everybody's like huh yan ang pinag pinagagawan nila hindi naman guwapo diba parang ang guwapo guwapo niya hindi naman but what What's so attractive about, ah, affluent, mayaman yung mama. Kaya pinag-aagawan ng mga magkakapatid, pati pamangkin, inaagaw. Di ba? Because wealth makes you look attractive. Di ba? And uh, maybe you're not wealthy, maybe you're not attractive, but the third, you fall under the third metrics, which is achievements. You know, leadership, having a, high position, whether it's in corporate or in, um, in government or even here at the feast. You know, I, I'm, I'm usually, so far, I'm the only uh, woman who joins um, now and then the builders' meetings. And I have to remind the builders, all our builders are male. I have to remind them. I, say, I, I really tell them, I say, you know what, guys? You have to be careful when you stand on stage. Because do you notice? When somebody stands here on stage, yung builder natin, gumagwapo. Di ba? Napansin nyo yun? Kahit sinong builder, pag nakatungtong na sa stage, gumagwapo. Di ba? Maganda yung ilaw. Di ba? May filter. Di ba? So I tell them, you have to be careful. Because women are naturally attracted to you. Kahit kala mo naman, kala mo gwapo ka. Hindi. Di ba? Feeling ka lang. Pero pag tumungtong ka dito sa stage, all of a sudden, wow. You know, women uh, start to idolize you. It, sometimes it starts with just admiration. But then later on, it, you know, it can turn into a fantasy and then you have all these problems. And so I, I'm, I'm like the, I, I try to balance them out and I, and I, you know, sometimes I, hindi, ikaw hindi ka guapo ha, pero minsan yung ilaw may effect sa you. <laughs> so you have to be careful in that sense. See, so achievement also um, adds to um, a person's stature. But again, these are metrics of the world. Uh, God uses a totally different metrics. You know, this is not part of my outline, but I, I just remember this story. You remember how it was in the in our gospel, in, in our um, mass readings recently about how uh, um, Samuel chose David among the sons of Eliab. You remember that? And Eliab had brought out his, his eldest son and, and the prophet Samuel said, Wow, tangkad, broad-shouldered, guapo. This must be the king that God will anoint the first 
you know, the, the king of um, Israel. But God said, no, it's not him. So Elijah brings out his sons one by one by one by one until he reaches the seventh son and God did not choose any of them. And what did Samuel say? He said, are these the only sons that you have? Pito, seven sons na nga yun. Ito lang, sabi ng propeta. And you know, sometimes God is like that with us. We've given what we think is our all. And then God says, that's it. That's all you have to give. But then, Eliab remembers his youngest. Oh, I have David. He's just, a, he's a boy. He's, you know, he watches the sheep. And, and then Samuel calls him and then he sees this boy, the least among the brothers. And God says, that's him. Anoint him. God's metrics are different. God saw David's heart. God sees into the heart. While we choose according to attractiveness, stance, talino, achievements, God looks into the heart. So God used a totally different metrics, and that's what we're going to learn about today. Um, so we go back to uh, Matthew 2. Verse 23, and it says here, So the family went and uh, lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said. He will be called a Nazarene, the Messiah, the long-awaited Christ, would be called a Nazarene. You know, um, I I've read the entire Bible. I've read the Old Testament. But that line does not appear in the Old Testament. He will be called a Nazarene. Wala yan. So you rin yung ang Old Testament, you will not find that, that um, line. So why did um, Matthew write this? Where, did, where was he quoting this from? And uh, we, for, for many years, you know, um, Christians were trying to find out, what, sinong prophet ba yung kinukot? Ni, ni Matthew. San galing yung, yung prophecy na yon? Sinong prophet ang nagsabi nun? But we're gonna um, solve that problem today because um, it was not an actual prophecy that was spoken in the Old Testament. Uh, if you can turn your Bibles to Isaiah 11 verse 1, that's in the Old Testament. By the way, I saw Bibles for sale outside. So if you don't have your personal Bible yet, um, you can get a copy. So you can um, mark your Bibles and go back also. Okay, Isaiah 11 verse 1 says, Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. That's what it says in Isaiah 11. And, you know, again, I mentioned that David became um, king of Israel when he was anointed. And from the time of David, all the kings, diba? we studied that in, um, when we first started this series, the genealogy of Jesus. Jesus came from the David, Davidic um, lineage, the line of David. So all the kings um, came from the line of David, but because of all the sins, starting from David, who committed adultery and murder, and then next to him, you know, all the sins that were committed in his line, parang naputol, parang, you know, you, it's like you want to be cut, you want to cut off that um, lineage because of all the sins. It's, it, maybe, maybe, you know, if, if God was a person, he would be thinking, I think I made the wrong decision or, you know, he, the, we, we should change the line again because um, these, these people are just so unworthy. But God made a promise. God made a promise that the Messiah would come from the Davidic root. And so it was like David's root, David's tree was cut because of all their sins. But here in Isaiah 11, um, there's the, God's promise saying that all is not lost. All is not lost. And 
from that stump, like, like the tree that was cut, there will grow a shoot, a small branch, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And this is the, where that Messiah is. That's the reference to the promised Messiah coming from the line of David. So that Messiah is that little stick, that little stick growing out of an old, uh, um, you know, stump of a tree. And because of this prophecy, other prophets would refer to that stick, that root, that, um, that uh, stump growing, that shoot growing out of David's family. And so it was like the Messiah was the stick man. Stick man, parang stick. He was growing out there as a stick. And uh, so when, G when, when, when they said that Jesus was born in Nazareth, Nazareth is the uh, word that it came from. And Nazar means a branch or a stick. Are you following me? Yeah. So by saying when 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 Matthew said that Jesus was born in Nazareth and then he said that's why it was prophesied that the Messiah would come this was to fulfill what the prophets had said that he will be called a Nazarene not ser stick stickman so he was the stick man that came from the stick town. So for, for Matthew, it was fulfilling that prophecy in Isaiah 11. Okay, are you following? It's, it's, it's so wonderful how God, you know, only God can weave something like this. You know, when I watch a Korean novella. How many of you watch Korean novellas? Okay. You know, one of the things, Erika, talaga, believe ako. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I enjoy in watching Korean novellas, okay, is that all of the loose ends are tied up at the end. There is no superfluous scene. When they show a glass of water falling, for example, they didn't show that for nothing. Later on, episodes later, you'll realize why they showed that glass falling. May tahe, may buhol. And then at the end of 16 episodes, all of the loose ends are tied. And as a writer, I've, oh, I, whenever I watch I'm, uh, a new drama, I always try to figure out the formula. How did they write that? How can they put in, you know, so many parallel uh, plots and stories and then all of them get tied up. They're all connected at the end. Well, you know, when you read scripture, it's like that. All of the things written in the Old Testament are fulfilled in Jesus Christ. That's what's amazing. And so here, again, we read another Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled, that Jesus will be um, born in Nazareth, although it was not exactly the word that was um, mentioned in the original prophecy. So the stick man coming from the stick town. So why, you know, Nazareth during that time, was a, it was a, like a tiny barrio. It, was a, it wasn't on the map. It was a place, you know, with very little people, maybe, I don't know, 20 families. Diba? It was a kind of place na hindi man lang tinayuan ng Jollibee. Diba? <laughs> Pinalampas ng Jollibee, akalain nyo? Meron palang ganong bayan na, you know, it, it's really, a, it's not on the map. But the Messiah was born there. I was, if I was God, thank, thank God I'm not God. But if I wrote the script, I would put the Messiah, I would make the Messiah, you know, be, be born in a, you know, maybe the Diocletian's temple or, 
the in Rome, you know, the Roman Empire, or in some grand palace. But no, God allows his son to be born in a very unknown town, unknown town called Nazareth. So why did, why did God choose Nazareth? Because he wanted to say that he's changing the metrics. He's changing the way we measure things. He's changing our standards. It's not attraction. It's not affluence. It's not achievement that produces value. It's something far deeper. And so when we, when we go, back, go back to the book of Matthew, when it says here that he will be called a Nazarene, you know that, that, that Nazarene, you know, it's, it's like if you search, if it's on, a, uh, on the internet, it's hyperlinked. Alam niyo yun, pag naka-hyperlink, pag naka-underline yung word sa internet, di ba, that means it's clickable, and then it will jump to other references. That word Nazarene, if, if um, this was uh, in the computer age, would be clickable. It was hyperlinked to all these prophecies that I just explained to you. So, that's, this is Jesus. This is, this, is, this is who our God is. And one of the most powerful passages that's hyperlinked, quote-unquote, to Jesus being Nazarene is in Isaiah 53. And I'm going to read that with you. Isaiah 53. Okay. I'm reading from my Bible so that if you have your Bible, you also have time to turn the page with me. Okay. So, this is a poem that Isaiah wrote, and this is where he also calls the Messiah a stick man. And he describes the great suffering that the Messiah will have to go through. And as I read this with you, I want you to know that this, this Old Testament passage is referring to Jesus. And look how it has been fulfilled. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, okay, let's read from verse 1. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a dry, a root in dry ground. So there again, the reference to being a stick. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion. Remember on the cross, Jesus was pierced. He was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. That's why the cross is our salvation. That's why our cross is the source of our healing. That's why we look to the cross and we are saved. Again, another hyperlink to the Old Testament. If you read the book of um, Exodus, if you, you remember the story when uh, there were a lot of serpents um, that, uh, th that they encountered in the desert. And then people were dying because of the serpents. And what did God tell Moses? He said, make a, uh, an, a bronze serpent. Lift it high. And when people look at that bronze serpent, they shall be healed. 
What's that bronze serpent? If you look at the side of medicine boxes, you know the symbol of medicine is like a cross with a serpent around it. That's the symbol that came from the book of Exodus. It's healing. And then, of course, that was a pre, uh, it's like a prophecy again of what would happen in the New Testament. Now it's no longer a bronze serpent. It's Jesus hanging on the cross. Amazing, right? And so we look to him. We look to Jesus and we are healed. Why did, why did Jesus do this for us? Why? God, God of the universe, God of all creation comes down to hang for us. Remember one of our previous talks? Uh, our one big message was, you're worth it. It's because you're worth it. You and I are worth it. And that's why Jesus did this to us. And God's, God truly measures value in very different ways, very different ways from ours. Uh, God measures value in terms of uh, selflessness. His metrics are greatness is selflessness. And that's what he showed us on the cross. Greatness is sacrifice. You know, when things like these happen, you know, the, all these things happening in our world today, ta'al, the virus, you know, God knows what the next decade, months, or even months will bring us. It, we have to think outside of ourselves. We have to learn, as, as Christians, we have to learn to be selfless. I remember a story when um, I attended a Christian publishing conference where 50 nations were represented. We really take things for granted here in the Philippines because here we're all of us, most of us are Christians. But in countries, especially where um, Muslims are stronger, diba? Uh, in Muslim countries, there's really violence between the Christians and the Muslims. And uh, one of the um, speakers uh, shared that, I can't even remember what um, nationality they were, but I think it was from a Middle East country. And they were saying that the Muslims in their, in their place were, they were always at war, you know, they were, and, and they would sometimes break their, the, the windows of Christians. Or sometimes they would, uh, one time, somebody threw a, like a firebomb and set uh, this, this Christian's house on fire, the, gar the garden on fire. But then, because of um, the war, uh, people were, the refugees were, were moving out. If I'm not mistaken now, I remember, I think it, it, this was in Syria. So they had to, you know, the refugees from Syria, they had to leave the war-torn towns. And so they, the, 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 um, the Muslims started to move to the Christian area because that was, it was safer there. And you know what the Christians did? The same person whose house was burnt opened his house and welcomed not just this um, person who set his house on fire, but also the other uh, Muslims and that's that's when Christianity shines that's when that's when our faith becomes real you know it's easy to attend the feast week in week out you know pare -pareho tayo. We, we all believe in the same God but what what if we're faced you know with our enemies people who actually lambast us or hate us can we still treat them with the same love and respect that we treat our fellow Christians. But that is precisely what God calls us to do. And so God did this. <clears throat> God did this because he sees in us value. Greatness is defined by selflessness, by sacrifice, by service. And he did this to set an example for us. 
I want to end with a story uh, that um, happened to Bo. And uh, I want to ask you to stand up. God sees your greatness. This happened a few years ago. He went to Sagada with his family. And after um, they came from Sagada, after eight hours of driving, they stopped by Nueva Vizcaya. They were so hungry. His boys were hungry. Maru was hungry. Bo was hungry. So they stopped by a, a small restaurant. And when Bo entered, yung manager, yung mga waitress, yung mga waiters doon, nakilala siya. They recognized Bo. So, they, they started taking, you know, asking if they could take pictures with him. And parang si Coco Martin yung pumasok sa restaurant. Alam niyo yun, yung ganong feeling. The thing was, they had been, Bo had been in, in Sagada for four days. Hindi siya nag-shave. He, ha he did not shave. He was, so, he was wearing puruntong shorts and t-shirt. He didn't even take a bath that morning because ang lamig-lamig daw sa sagada. But when he went there, parang ayaw niya magpa-selfie, no? Dahil sa itsura niya. But people didn't see that. They kept on taking pictures of him as if he was, you know, Coco Martin. And then, they didn't stop there. Sabi ng manager sa kanya, Brother Bo, 10th anniversary po ng restaurant namin. Meron po kaming raffle. Can you do the honor of picking out the raffle winners? So imagine him, t-shirt, hindi nag-shave. Alam niyo po si Bo, pag tumubo yung balbas niyan, parang ano, pulo-pulo tong barabaranggay, sepa-separated. <laughs> hindi yung parang, di ba yung buong ganon, hindi po ganyan. Kanya, dito, mukha siyang Genghis Khan medyo. Di ba? Tapos, i, pinaakyat pa siya sa stage. There was a DTI representative because it, <laughs> it was a real <laughs> raffle. So imagine mo yung the DTI representative naka-ano pa, naka-coat pa. Naka-coat sa, tapos yung guest of honor, nakapuruntong shorts, hindi pa naligo, hindi nag-shave. Di ba? Tapos siya yung pinapunot. But you know what? The people in the restaurant, you know, the, the people there, they didn't notice. They didn't mind that he was, he looked unkempt and probably medyo mabaho. <laughs> they didn't mind because they still saw Bo Sanchez. They still saw Bo Sanchez. God sees you that way. God sees us that way. Doesn't matter if we've sinned. Doesn't matter if we've lost our way. Doesn't matter if we didn't close that deal or we didn't get that job that we were praying for or we didn't top the exams or we weren't in the top 10. Doesn't matter because God sees you beyond your physical. Amen. God sees your heart. God sees your struggle to obey. I heard this one wonderful statement from a preacher. He said, struggling obedience is true obedience. Sometimes in our walk with God, we feel like, wow, hirap na hirap ako mag-follow kay Lord. Lord, I, you know, it, it really... I, I, I really struggle following your will. And so sometimes when we think we struggle, we think that's not good enough for God. But that is true obedience. That is true obedience. So we come, we come before God Not with a, not wanting to fit into the standards of the world. Because if you use the standard of the world, it's fleeting. And honestly, 
we won't fit into that. Not all of us will fit into that. But when we look to the standard of God, God sees your value. God sees your greatness. You just have to live out what God has already put in us. Let's come before the Lord and just bring ourselves to Him. Our weaknesses, our struggles, our faltering ways. Our impure heart. And we pray, Lord, see beyond all these. In Jesus' name. Amen. up everything to you, Lord. We surrender everything, Lord. You see greatest in us. Even though, Lord, you're full of sin, but you still loved us. Showed us the way, the truth, and the life. And Lord, we surrender to you. Take over our lives, Lord. 
family, our relationships, our health. We surrender everything, Lord. Consume us, Lord. Take over. Oh, Father. Brothers and sisters, now the time for us to pray for our dreams. If you have your novena, just lift it up. Or if you don't have it, just place your hands on your heart. Because we know that your dreams are in your heart. Oh, Father, we lift up these dreams, Lord. You see greatness in these dreams, Lord. We see greatness in these dreams too, Lord. We humble ourselves, Lord. And we wait for the perfect time or the fulfillment of these dreams. Oh, Father, we ask for so many things, but you know the best for us, Lord. And we can't wait for the fulfillment of these dreams, Father. And we pray in your name, Jesus. offerings in a bit so if you haven't prepared your love offering envelopes i'm going to give you some time we have uh, some announcements we'll make announcements oh you may be seated i'll make you stand in a while okay video oh okay uh we have a new um online tv Ah, hindi mali, no? Hindi TV show, eh. Online, eh. Online show uh, entitled Feast TV. Let's make video. Yes, let's watch this.
com slash Feast TV official. Praise God. You know, we take it for granted that we have so much. We have so many resources um, that we can use to grow. Not, not all communities have this. You know, when, when, especially in the 80s <laughs> and the 90s when we didn't have internet. So I hope you see the value in all these things that uh, we produce. Because if you really want to grow, you know, maybe um, some of you may, may feel like you're not being fed enough. You're hungry for God's Word. There's so much resources out there. And this is another resource that we can take advantage of. So please do subscribe and um, that's free. Uh, okay, more announcements. First timers, any first timers in the house? Don't be shy. Yay, we have first timers. Please stand up. We won't make you sing or dance. We just want to welcome you. There you go. Wow, praise God. Um, if you're, yay, you're welcome in this place. Kung meron kayo mga katabi, yung mga katabi nila, pakipat lang sila and say, welcome. And we want to pray for you. Can we just um, raise our hands to them? Lord, we thank you for our first-timers that you've sent here. First-timers mean growth. And first-timers mean our family is, is growing. And we pray for the intentions of these brothers and sisters. All of them have uh, specific needs, Lord. We pray that you may bless them in a special way. Lord, yung, yung alam nila na, na talagang galing sa iyo yung blessing na yun. I grant them a um, special blessing for coming today. And we pray, Lord God, that they may find a home here at our feast. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. And uh, before you leave, we're going to have uh, um, some, some uh, servant here with a uh, tarpolina. With a tarp. There you go. Welcome, first timer. So just approach um, uh, that uh, our sister there, and we have a welcome uh, gift for you. Okay, let's do life together um, by joining uh, light groups. Uh, light groups are smaller groups uh, that uh, meet. Um, every week or every other week. You know, I, I always say that when you come here to the feast, sometimes people don't notice if you're absent or not. But if you have a light group, may nakakapansin. And when we have a light group, we can we have a place to share uh, our the things that ha are happening in our lives, our problems, our, our blessings. So people grow. This is really where true growth happens in our light group. So you can sign up outside. And then, um, last year, we gave away sacrificial envelopes. And if you haven't turned over your sacrificial offering, please do so. Uh, again, um, our sacrificial offerings are used for our special projects. The love offerings that we give here, um, dun sa basket, in a while, those are used for our operations. It's to pray, pay for our rentals here and um, our suppliers. Uh, but the sacrificial offering is what we use for our, our special project. So um, if uh, you have not yet turned over your envelope or maybe it's your, the, your first time to hear this and you want to make an offering, then you can get an envelope outside. And also, serve with us. There are many ministries um, here at the feast, hindi lang po yung nakikita nyo dito sa stage. Uh, so, we have all these different kinds of ministries that will surely be able to make use of whatever gifts you have. So, we have ministry sign-ups outside. And catch us online, like us on Facebook at Feast uh, SM Aura. Uh, and we were live every Saturday. So, if you're sick like Randy... I hope you're watching live. We're going to pray for our builder because he's, uh, um, he had fever. He's been having the chills. Uh, so we're going to pray for him, for God to heal him. But if you're sick, you're not able to come, you can always uh, participate online at the feast. Because we go live every Saturday starting at 5.15. So you can follow us on Instagram and also listen to our playlist on Spotify at uh, Feast Aura. Okay, so can we stand? And let's uh, lift up your love offering envelopes to the Lord. We're going to pray for your offering. Lord, we thank you for blessing us. We have something to give because you have given so generously to us. 
I pray, Lord God, for all of these givers that you may uh, give back to them, Lord God, 30, 60, 100 fold and more besides, Lord, not just in their finances, but in every area of their life, in their health, in their family, in their business, in their career. And uh, we thank you, Lord God, for we know that you far surpass our expectations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's also, uh, before you uh, come, come forward, let's also pray for our other prayers here. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for um, answered all of our answered prayers. Thank you for um, giving us strength every day, for keeping us safe. Thank you for our brother or sister here who got um, their dream job. Thank you, Jesus, because you always um, provide. Amen. You always provide and you uh, bless us so immensely. We um, pray now, Lord, for our uh, prayer requests for this um, person who's praying for um, the his or her college um, school. We pray that you may guide this person, this young person, to the perfect um, school that you want for him or her. We also pray, Lord, for our builder, Randy. We pray that your healing power may come upon him as he has been a blessing to many of us, to all of us here at our feast. We pray that you may bless him, Lord God, with um, good health and, and strength and um, uh, all the blessings that he needs for his life and for his family this coming week. And we praise and thank you, Lord God, for all of these in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come forward. Give your love offerings with joy.
Spirit. Some awesome beginnings now. I got the shot. Amen. Amen. See you next week.